Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again. And in some of my other videos, you're going to see where I uh, purchased this Cincinnati dividing head. And I'll be using it in several videos to cut gears and other similar operations. But I bought this on Craigslist and got a good buy on it, I thought. But the problem was that there was no faceplate and no center and no chuck. So I thought, well, no problem. I'll uh, just adapt one of my chucks, or maybe one of my chucks will fit. Well, wrong. Even though this is a, a two-inch diameter, which I thought, well, that's pretty common. A little bit under. And it's uh, eight threads per inch. Well, that sounds pretty common, too. But no, there is no chuck available, no backing plate, so i got to make my own. And uh, it's really kind of a, a chore, something I didn't want to get into, but I think I'll go ahead and run a video of how I did this while I'm at it. And I already made a test piece just out of a thick wall tube that I had from my buddy Dave down in St. Louis. And uh, I gathered up the dimensions and made sure that I had the right sizes and everything. And this will serve as a thread protector also, so two birds with one stone, I guess. And I got a good fit there, but now I got to do the exact same thing in cast iron and fit it up to my chuck. So let's go over to the other bench and take a look at what I'm doing. This is the chuck that I'm going to adapt and it's uh, a three jaw chuck and it came on that Logan uh, 820 that I bought and you might have seen that in some of the videos when I unpacked this but this chuck was made in Poland and those are metric cap screws and I'm just going to set this aside and I got it marked as such so I can always return it to its original chuck and it's kind of a nice chuck I take it back, it's made in China. I guess the other one was uh, Polish. I don't have any reversing jaws for this. At least I don't think I do. But what we got here is a chuck that is uh, six and a half inches in diameter. And I already had this backing plate in stock. And I'm not sure just where I got it, but uh, maybe it came from the same auction. It's a little bit smaller. It's six inches. And by the time I uh, turn that and true it, it's going to be just a little bit under. And you can see that I'm going to be able to fit it up here, but it's going to be pretty close. And I will have to drill new holes. There's the old holes there. But I'll have to drill new holes, and they're going to be dangerously close to the edge here. But I think I can still do it, and I'll switch those to an American size. Also, I'll, I'll space them out with uh, three. It probably should have four, but I'm going to use three. And there'll be a step on this eventually that will fit in here. The same as what you see on the original backing plate. Now this is a one and a half eight thread, and that would fit a Logan or an Atlas or a South Bend and probably many others but we got plenty of hub thickness here so that I can uh, turn that down or bore it rather to the right size thread it and uh, that's going to be done over on the closing lathe so let's uh, move over there now here's the game plan I've already reversed the jaws in this three jaw chuck and I've got the backing plate chucked up and I'm ready to start boring. Now I will not remove this face plate or this backing plate from the chuck until the threading job is done. So in other words after I get down to what I think is my dimension I'll take the entire chuck off and go over to the dividing head and I know it's going to be bulky and awkward but attempt to see if I've got the right fit so that if I do have to uh, take off a little more material. I can uh, put the chuck back on the lathe and proceed as if I uh, had not even stopped. So think about things like that that uh, 
because you'll never get it back in the chuck and, and line it up properly uh, to finish off a job. Now this is cast iron and uh, hopefully it's nice gray iron that will machine nicely so I'm ready to bore and I'm using my uh, Sorola boring uh, bar here along with uh, the Sorola uh, tool block, quick change tool block and uh, that's my favorite and it's a rather massive uh, boring bar. It's uh, genuine or loris CBB2. I think it's uh, about seven eighths in diameter so it's nice and stiff and rigid and uh, that's what you need in a boring bar with a carbide tip. Just after completing the last little video clip I heard the mail truck. I'm on a rural route. It has a very distinctive sound but I went out and got the mail and in there is my 2015 Grizzly catalog. Now uh, this is about New Year's 2014 so nice little New Year's present and I won't look at that till this evening give me something to look forward to. I haven't bought, purchased a lot from Grizzly but if you haven't already seen my uh, video tour of Grizzly tools in their big store down in Springfield Missouri make sure you look at that video 14,000 other people have have looked at that so uh, join me if you want to see what a big tool store looks like but when I carried this in from the mailbox you know what I'm there what this feels kind of funny on the back and look at this it's all torn and it's been taped repaired and then I have to laugh although it's kind of a ridiculous when you think about it but it says United States Post Office received in damaged condition well received from who received from your own truck you know you're the ones that damaged it and now you're kind of blaming it on some anonymous person that uh, damaged this and you are just the purveyors of damaged goods come on post office let's handle this stuff with a little care would you sorry about that rant I faced off the end of the hub right here and I'm boring right now and I just about already removed the thread so it's about one and a half inches in the diameter right now. ID. All these other surfaces will be machined later on in the same setup though. It's coming along fine. I'm at about 400 RPM and the feed rate is about 4,000. Cast iron is uh, machining pretty well. Now there's no need for uh, lubricant because it's got graphite in it, but as you know it's very messy on the hands. Everything gets black. you got to be careful not to wipe your nose. All right, I'm at my correct ID, according to my little chart that I have. Now I'm going to put a bit of a step in here, two inch diameter and about a quarter inch deep, and that'll serve as the uh, step where I uh, start my thread at, or finish the thread, and when I'm down to that, uh, that step with the threading tool, I know that I'm at the right depth of the thread. Plus it'll help uh, allow me to screw this onto the thread, you know, a little bit of an alignment uh, of surface. You'll see most chucks have a step on them. The step is completed and that's a two inch plug I'm just using as a gauge. Can you see the step? Very much like the step in this uh, other backing plate. I'm ready to start internal thread again. I've done this in other videos, but I think I'll go ahead and run through uh, the various steps here in, in setting up the lathe. So I have it in uh, back gears, slow speed, so it's about 60 or 70 RPM right now, but I may speed it up as I gain confidence in it. The feed uh, uh, reverse lever is in the lower position. The gearbox is set for 8 threads per inch. 8 TPI and then uh, looking over here the compound is set at uh, 29 or 30 degrees to the left 
And on the closing, of course, I'll be using uh, the half nut lever right here. And here's the thread chasing dial. I can check, uh, I can catch it on any number or any line because it's eight threads per inch. Pretty easy to remember, so that's not very critical. I've already touched the work off and uh, taken a scratch pass for that matter and set the cross feed for zero and I'll always return that to zero and all of my feeding will be done as far as the depth is concerned by turning the compound out. The threading tools in a boring bar, it's about a half inch diameter boring bar I wish I had a bigger boring bar to be a little bit stiffer and I've got the correct amount uh, sticking out here no more than necessary and I squared the tool up with the center gauge and the tool is on center as far as the height is concerned I think I've about covered it here and I'm ready to take my second cut. Just a side note before I start threading. On the closing lay, this is the half nut lever or the split nut lever. And what that does is when I operate the lever, it closes the half nut around the lead screw. And a half nut looks just like this, only this one's out of a uh, atlas lathe, but it opens and closes over the lead screw and it provides a positive drive for the carriage for threading. Most threading dials on any brand lathe are pretty much similar and there's a gear that rides right on the lead screw and it causes it to revolve and we have a zero mark here or a witness mark and then on the dial itself which revolves we have uh, eight uh, little marks and four of them are numbers one two three four and then the other longer lines are just uh, lines between the numbers and you need to remember that uh, in regards to uh, what, what uh, lines or numbers you use that when cutting an even number of threads per inch the half nut lever may be closed at any line on the dial but when you're cutting an odd number of threads per inch such as 11 only numbered lines may be used and for half threads should you have something like eight and a half use only even numbered lines and for quarter threads use only odd numbered lines so that's the purpose of the different lines and in this case I'm threading uh, eight threads per inch so I can catch it really on any number or any line. Now if you haven't threaded before slow your machine down because when you slow the motor down or change the uh, spindle speed notice that the speed of the dial changes. Now as I speed it up again it's moving faster it would be harder to catch it, uh, especially for a beginner. Now what happens if I miss the number? In other words, I'm waiting for the line to come around and uh, I just flub up and I catch it right there. Now what will happen is that you'll take the top of the thread off. In other words, you're going to get a double thread. So uh, it's a good idea to start far enough back from your work such that uh, should you catch it in the wrong spot, you still got time to stop uh, before the tool hits the work. Back the carriage up a little bit and try it again. So for threading eight threads per inch, I can catch it on any number. that uh, actually it goes a little bit past the line and you say well you missed it no I didn't miss it and there's just that much play or lost motion or backlash in the gear and everything uh, and so it always goes a little bit past on most lays and that doesn't matter as long as it's consistent so then if I were to catch it uh, just a little bit before the number you see it would get caught right there So 
I'm raising the, the half nut lever exactly when the lines coincide, but it goes just a little bit fast. And that's okay, again, as long as it's consistent. And go ahead and uh, practice with your lathe and, and see uh, uh, where the actual movement stops so you get used to this before you actually start threading. You should rehearse this if you've never done it before, before you commit yourself to actually cutting. Rehearse and practice. It's the time of reckoning. I think I'm down to my dimension, so I'm going to take the entire chuck off the closing lathe and walk it over into the other room and see if it fits up. All right, let's see if it fits. Now I turn this uh, dividing head into the vertical position, so it wouldn't have I wouldn't have to fight it. Let gravity help me. Good, she's going on. Going on. I think I got it. But I'm not taking it out of the chuck yet. You'll see why.